Manitowoc man jailed for trying to meet underage girl for sexual activity. Oshkosh police investigate death of a man and woman. GOP leaders call Evers' budget a liberal wish list. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Monday, March 4th, 2019. A Manitowoc man is facing charges for using a computer to facilitate a child sex crime. According to the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, a Manitowoc Police Department school resource officer was informed by a juvenile student in mid-February that she received inappropriate messages on social media from 29-year-old Eric Fisher, her previous cheer dance coach. He is employed by Galaxy All-Star Cheerleading in Manitowoc. On Wednesday, the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office began communicating with Fisher on a social media site. They say Fisher agreed to meet with who he thought was a 15-year-old girl for sexual activity near Lincoln High School. When Fisher arrived, he was taken into custody for solicitating a minor representation from a minor, attempt to expose a child to harmful material, and use of a computer to facilitate a child's sex crime. Fisher is being held at the Manitowoc County Jail on $50,000 cash bail, and his initial court appearance is scheduled for Monday afternoon. The investigation is continuing, and authorities are attempting to determine if there are any additional victims. The Oshkosh Police Department are investigating the weekend death of a man and a woman. The call started as a weapons violation on Saturday afternoon, but when police arrived at the South Oshkosh home, they found a 26-year-old man dead from a gunshot wound and a 26-year-old woman in critical condition. She later did at an Oshkosh hospital and no one else was injured in the incident. And police say it appears to be an isolated situation and no further damage to the public. The identity of the victims has not yet been released, but officers say the man and the woman knew each other. There does not appear to be any other suspects. A UW-Milwaukee professor is accused of sexual assault by use of force. Anthony Azanabar is facing two felony counts and one misdemeanor, according to the online court records. He was in court on Sunday and pled not guilty to the misdemeanor. The Milwaukee County judge also gave Eisenhower a, a protection order prohibiting him from setting foot on the UWM campus. It is, clear who brought, it is unclear who brought the charges against him forward. UWM officials released the following statement Sunday afternoon. The charges against the professor are very serious. UWM police have been working closely with the district attorney's office on the criminal investigation. The university administration is evaluating his continued employment, and Professor Azanabar is currently not assigned to teach any classes and does not have contact with any students. UWM is committed to maintaining a safe environment for all of our students and we always encourage students who believe they have been victimized to come forward and speak to the police. Their courage allows us to take action. The professor is due back in court on March 13th. Republican legislative leaders criticized Governor Tony Evers' budget as a liberal wish list, with no chances of passing as proposed. This really is not the budget for our people, said State Senator Alberta Darling, co-chair of the Joint Finance Committee. We're on the right track, and this budget takes us off of that track, and I am very, very, very disappointed. A lot of the items the governor ticket 
ticketed off, I think were kind of the greatest hits of the Democratic Party, said Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald. In his budget address Thursday night, Evers called for bipartisan efforts and address the needs to Wisconsin residents. That's being greeted by some skepticism by Representative John Nigren. While he talks a good game on working together, there has been no effort with any of the leaders from the Assembly or the Senate. The Governor Evers' standpoint to say, okay, where can we agree? The Marinette Republic, Republican co-chair the Budget Committee with Senator Darling, and Wisconsin P Policy Forum Research Director Jason Stein said Evers is proposing tax increases, but also tax cuts. The governor is proposing tax cuts for low and middle income earners and tax increases on upper income earners, Stein said. Stein said the governor is proposing about a billion dollars in new taxes. Republican lawmakers opposed to Evers will put together their own two-year spending plan. He could use his line item veto on that, or there is always a possibility, if a small possibility, that he could veto what they come up with. Stein said, adding that would put the state in uncharted territory. Wisconsin farmers are seeing damages from the extreme winter, and state officials are reminding them to keep in contact with their local agricultural office. State Agricultural Secretary Brad Pfaff says the state and federal agencies are ready to step in to help farmers, but they have to report the damage. We want to make sure that anyone that has been impacted by this, that they can contact their insurance agent, but also that they contact the county, the USDA Farm Service Agency local county office. Pfaff says his office will coordinate with multiple agencies that will help farmers recover. We are always communicating with our partners at the Wisconsin Emergency Management, and we're partnering with the USDA Farm Service Agency. Pfaff says there is a federal program for livestock losses, programs like the Emergency Livestock Assistance Program, as well as the Livestock Indemnity program could be of assistance. A number of farms have seen the barn roofs collapse under the weight of snow and ice, and some have had outbuilding damage by high winds. And finally, do not be surprised if you see a big billboard listing beer ingredients. Bud Light is using billboards in and around Milwaukee to poke at the Miller Light for using corn syrup as an ingredient in its light beer. It is a continuation of Bud Light's Super Bowl ad that did the same thing. And so far, there are five billboards with the message, all of them along the I-94 or near Mitchell Airport. There's also been some pushback against the campaign, and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association has thanked Miller for supporting local corn growers. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Wednesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.